Hello everybody. It's Julie from Simply Notable. Well, I thought since we have now done a winding up a um, center pole ball on an ostapine, and then we've also um, shown how to wind up yarn on a nitty knotty, I thought maybe for those of you who are um, new, newer to knitting and crochet and aren't really um, clear on how this is done with a skein of yarn, how to get it into a form to knit or to crochet from, I thought I would show you how you use a swift and a ball winder to wind up a, from a um, skein of yarn into a cake. So what we start is undo our skein and get our big loop. I just noticed that this yarn is like the same color as my shirt. So well, the first thing that we have to do is find the end. I need my glasses. And be careful that when you find the end that it truly is the end. Because sometimes halfway through a skein of yarn, they'll loop it through into like a, a um, figure eight and then they'll keep going. And that's only halfway through the skein. And if you cut it there, you'll cut your, your big loop of yarn. So look for the end, and I do see with this Colinette Jitterbug, which is great yarn for socks, I love it. Um, they do have an end here, and you can tell it's the end because you've got two, your two little ends there, and a knot. So I'm going to cut that off. If you're really dexterous, you could undo the knot, but I'm not, so I'll just cut it off. And where I undo it is where the yarn begins. And I kind of like to go back a little bit and see where the yarn is coming from. Like sometimes one side will come from the outside, one side from the inside. Or it looks like one will be easier to get started. And in this case, this one looks to me like it'll become more from the one side of the skein and that'll be easier to get started. So I'm just going to tuck that back to the inside and I'll put it on the swift. These swifts are adjustable. This one comes from Knit Picks. And you can make it as big or small as you want with that little screw that comes with it. It, whoops, takes it up or down. <laughs> we want to go. Oh, seriously. Okay, we will start again. So, you put your yarn on the swift by first of all adjusting it to about where you think it goes and tightening. This skein could be on here, I mean, it could be held just a little tighter. So I'll unscrew it and make this a little there. I'm happier with that. And kind of adjust your skein so that it's not twisted around. Your yarn will come off easier. <laughs> All right. And then your yarn comes up through the little wire holder here and then there's a notch where you can put the end of your yarn and I kind of like to make a long end so if everything else gets wrapped up in usually I can find that end and then you just begin to wind you can kind of help the skein along I like to Try to keep a little more even tension because as it comes off the swift sometimes it gets stuck in places and then you have a real tight tight spot in your cake you know so wind wind wind
I think I'll stop it here and just give you a look. You can see that it's coming on there real nice and neat. It's laying on real pretty. Every once in a while you'll hit a little snag, that's okay. If you buy yarn at a yarn store, they normally have a, a really nice swift and ball winder there and they will roll, wind it up for you into a cake if you want. However, I like to have my own because I just don't always knit up the yarn that I buy right away. Sometimes I have it for years and I like it to be stored loosely in the skein. And a cake is a little tighter and tends to stretch out the yarn. So once it's in a cake, I like to knit it right away. So I just wind it up right before I use it. Now this ball winder I have is from Knit Picks. I think it's just about $20. But it's a wonderful ball winder. I've probably had it for eight years or so, and it's never given me any trouble. The Swift is also from Knit Picks, and these are just inexpensive yarn tools that worked well for me. I know there's a lot of people who talk about a Royal Ball Winder, which is heavier duty. And if you're really, really a super knitter, you might want better tools, you know, more expensive, tools that you feel you can hand down that will last generations. I'm okay with these. I just need, you know, I'm okay with just a, a small investment in them. And um, if they go bad, I'll, I'll buy another. But I've had great luck so far. Knock on wood. I think the only thing wood around here is the Swift. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen these yarn bowls that they sell too. They have these really pretty yarn bowls, some of them in uh, ceramic, some in wood, with a little notch that your yarn goes through, and it kind of holds the yarn in the cake within the bowl so that you can set it beside your chair where you're knitting, and it keeps the yarn from rolling around, keeps the kitties from getting it. And that's a fun accessory too. Okay, so there's my nice big cake. Take it off the ball winder so you can see it. Isn't that pretty? So that's how I'll get started knitting socks. Bye bye. Thanks for watching.